broadcast of the MHSAA Finals is made possible by Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award. True Value Hardware, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports Are Winners program. From the Breslin Student Events Center in East Lansing, the Michigan High School Athletic Association presents the Class B Championship Game in the 1994 Boys Basketball Tournament between the Shoreans of St. Clair Shores, Luxor, and the Pioneers of East Grand Rapids High School. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Berkey at the Breslin, ready for a big day of action live here on past four state championships coming your way. Following this one today, at two o'clock this afternoon, we'll have the Class D seat doubleheader. Starting out in Class D, between Evan Junction Superior Central and Grand Rapids Covenant Christian. Immediately following that one, the Class C finale between Orchard Lake St. Mary and Granville Calvin Christian. And then at eight o'clock tonight, the Class A finale, Detroit Murray Wright and Detroit Pershing. You know, each team has its own unique story here, and perhaps the biggest variation occurs in our opening game in Class B. Lakeshore is just one step away from completing the ultimate in high school sports, an undefeated state championship season. East Grand Rapids, on the other hand, personifies how the state tournament is truly the second season for all teams across the state of Michigan. The Pioneers finished in fourth place in their conference, and here they are playing for a state crown. Now for a closer look at the two teams going after the B title, let's go courtside to the two gentlemen who will call the action, Tim Stout and Vernon Payne. Okay, Rick, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Jack Breslin Center, where these two teams are mighty excited. Lakeshore has won 53 games these past two seasons, more than any other high school in the state, but they got one more big one they want to get. East Grand Rapids is an underdog, but they won the state football title, so they're used to winning. Vern Payne, the former coach at Western Michigan and Wayne State, here to call the game with us today. It's got to be an exciting time for these young people, huh? It doesn't get much better than this for high school basketball players in the state, Tim. This is the ultimate. Now, uh, if you're going to talk about a superstar coming into this game, we got to start with uh, Lakeshore because the Shoreans have a point guard in Travis Conlon who is sensational. He's already signed with Michigan. He's going to be the guy East Grand Rapids is going to have to go after. Travis Conlon is an excellent basketball player. There may be better uh, athletes playing basketball today, but there are not very many better basketball players. He can penetrate. He knows when to go on his own. He knows when to involve his teammates. He's comfortable in a transition game or a half-court game. I really like him. They, they play nine seniors, uh, Lakeshore does, as opposed to East Grand Rapids, which has three underclassmen in the starting lineup. Now, they have a 10th grader who plays center, Corbett Elson. It's a lot of pressure to put on a kid, but what the heck, if they want to win, he's got to have a big game. Corbett Elson is the leading scorer for East Grand Rapids. They have to establish Corbett down low early. He's an excellent back-to-the-back -back basketball player. He's an excellent board man. If they can get the basketball down low to Corbett early, it could be a good basketball game. Well, Lakeshore Shore is the favorite, 27 and 0. They won by 34 here in the semifinals the other night. But maybe East Grand Rapids can just pull off the big upset, which is part of the lore of this tournament. Absolutely, I think that you know the key to this basketball game is going to be how East Grand Rapids handles the pressure. Okay, we'll be back with the starting lineups in a moment, Rick. That's the pregame set for you. Now back to you. We're certainly glad to be back here at the Breslin Center after uh, the, being at the Palace for a few years and before that Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor and of course before that it was here at Michigan State but at Jenison Fieldhouse. We're getting ready for a big day of action. We hope you keep it right here on pass all day long. And we'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment so stay right here. One of your network sponsors is True Value Hardware. University welcome you to the Jack Breslin Student Event Center for today's final game in the 1994 Class B Boys Basketball Tournament. Good sports are winners because they have the proper perspective about educational athletics because in the end it doesn't matter whether you win or lose but that you played the game. As we prepare to celebrate this educational experience we invite you to stand. Gentlemen, please remove your hats and caps. I'd like to introduce Kirsten 
Palmonter, and Meredith White of Perry High School, who will sing our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still to Kirsten and Meredith from Perry High School. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for today's game between the Pioneers of East Grand Rapids and the Shorians of St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. For East Grand Rapids at forward, 5'11", senior, number 12, Josh Brewer. For Lakeshore at forward, 6'5", senior, number 10, Jeff Patu. At the other forward for East Grand Rapids, 6'5", sophomore, number 40, Corbett Elson. For Lakeshore, at forward, 6'3", senior, 50, Carlos Sesta. At center for the Pioneers, 6'6", six, six, junior, 44, Chris Vitterini. At center for Lakeshore, 6'5", senior, 33, Pat Flaherty. At the guards for East Grand Rapids, 5'10", junior, number 11, Eddie Lampton. Guard for the Shorians, 6'5", senior, 21, Travis Conlon. The other guard for East Grand Rapids, 6'0", senior, 32, Jim Carroll. And for Lakeshore, 6'1", senior, 23, Jeremy Collins. Head coach of the Pioneers is Scott Tompkins. Head coach of the Shorians is Greg Essler. Your officials for today's game, Perry Costello and Orlando Crockett. The alternate is Dennis Oberlin. Okay, so there are your officials, Dennis Oberlin, Perry Costello, and uh, Orlando Crockett, and we're just about set to go. Tim Stout along with Vern Payne here at the Breslin Center. Once again, let's look, uh, Vern, at the starting lineups here. Kara hit a basket at the buzzer to win in the quarterfinals for East Grand Rapids. They've had, had a lot of heroes in the tournament. You see Conlon at the top. He's a point guard, but he leads their team in block yeah, shots, absolutely. too. He, he leads the team in block shots, and he leads the team in assists and steals. So Conlon's a complete basketball player. As you watch the... The uh, expressions on the faces of the kids. Anything you get to read out of there going into this? Well, if you look at uh, St. Clair Shores, I think that you see confidence. I think that you see a team that's been here before. And uh, it's going to be hard for the youngsters on uh, East Grand Rapids, I think, to adjust to uh, this veteran basketball team. Okay, Lakeshore won by 34 here Thursday night over Wyoming Park in the semifinals. That was one of those games that. Wyoming Park just couldn't get started. They struggled all night long, and it got worse, and a great win for East Grand Rapids.
points over Ishpeming Westwood, the team that knocked out the two-time state champ, Saginaw Buena Vista. Nice to have you with us wherever you are across the state of Michigan on this beautiful Saturday. We're in the spring now, and March Madness coming to a close in the state high school championship, and Lakeshore has the opening tip. Lakeshore is going to try to establish their inside game right away. They're going to look inside and try to get an easy basket for them. Collin was 5 for 18 the other night. He missed his first one here, and that's one he normally would not miss. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Conlon, he's already signed with Michigan. East Grand Rapids the other way. Their first shot by Chris Viterini doesn't go, and Viterini cannot get the rebound. Two possessions, no points yet, and on the drive, we have our first foul of the game. We figured it'd be an up-tempo game, and that's the start. That's exactly right. You know, uh, St. Clair Shores can play fast, they can play slow, and they can play in between. And Travis Conlon is very comfortable with any of those tempos. He, he had a great move here with a hitch step, froze the defense, and took the ball to the basket. Here he goes. He froze the defense, took the ball to the basket, laid it up with the left hand. Eddie Lampton uh, gets that personal foul, so there's our first point of the game from Travis Conlon. He averages 20 points a game. He's only a 61% free throw shooter. But he looks pretty good in his form, and his team is up one zip. Lakeshore 27-0 coming in. They won the McComb Area League. And East Grand Rapids only fourth in its league over in the Grand Rapids area, but a team that played a lot of Class A schools. Defensive pressure, that creates a turnover, and it's picked off by Jeff uh, Patu, and he heads his team the other way. East Grand Rapids is going to face that kind of pressure for the entire basketball game until they can prove to the Shurians that they can handle it. Jeremy Collins was on the wing. Here's Jeff Patu outside. And Travis Collin for three. In and out, no. He's 0 for 2, but the putback is up and good by Carlos Sesta, and Lakeshore is out in front 3 nothing. Carlos Sesta will crash the boards, and that, on the made basket, that establishes the Half-court trap or full-court pressure for Lakeshore. Okay, East Grand Rapids now down three. We played a minute and a half here in the uh, opening going. East Grand Rapids struggled uh, in the early going against Ishpeming and rallied the other night for a big win, so maybe that'll be the same pattern for them tonight. Rebound pulled down by Corbett Elson. That's his first. He had 10 the other night. He's the guy that has to play tough for them inside. East Grand Rapids third possession now looking for their first points. Josh Brewer from outside. That one's off. The putback is up and no, but a foul is called, and that'll send Jim Carrup to the line, and he'll shoot two. So that's the first foul on the Shorians. The Shorians are forcing East Grand Rapids to start their offense farther out on the court. Here we see the uh, jumper and uh, the rebound and putback by uh, Jim Carrop. Jimmy does a nice job of going to the basket. He's also a clutch player for East Grand Rapids. Jim Carrop averaging 9.6 points per game. He's a 69% free throw shooter. We'll try to get that foul for you here that's listed on the board. Uh, uh, Travis Conlon, they get. No, we'll have to fit. They don't have it listed here on the computer, so we'll get that foul for you and put it back up. And East Grand Rapids now on the board. Jim Carrop, who won the game in the quarterfinals with a three-pointer at the buzzer against St. Clair, gives his team its first point. Now it's 3-1 Lakeshore. Whistle inside on the line. Turnover, so Lakeshore gives it back. And that's a tough break, and Jeff Patu is a little unhappy that he was in the wrong place, perhaps with his feet. I don't think either, either club has really settled to their style of play yet. I think they're still filling each other out and they're a little nervous. Okay, Nelson goes inside and has it batted away. Now East Grand Rapids trying to establish some inside position, and as you can see, that's been difficult. Vitterini and... Here we have a travel. You would expect a lot of turnovers early on in a game like this. Both clubs struggled with turnovers the other night. Maybe the atmosphere and the aura can take its toll early on some of these teams. Absolutely. I think that uh, although both teams are kind of nervous right now, I think the difference is that Travis Collin can get his club into the offense. Okay. So Lakeshore with a 3-1 to one lead, and they have never trailed in this game so far. I like this series here. Uh, Lakeshore has really settled down. They're going to work the clock a little bit. They're going to be patient. They're going to try to get a good shot. 
Pat Flaherty got that foul at the other end for a lake sure that finally was listed properly. Outside the shot is up and good. They, is that Pat Flaherty? That's, it must be because they, yeah, they've got his number changed. He was listed as 44. Now we got it straight. He's 34. So he has three points, and it's five to one. It's Lakeshore's biggest lead, and that pressing defense has made it a bit tough. I wonder what we're doing here. And they get it. He's listed as 44, but he's wearing he's 34. 33. Okay, 33. They've got him at. Right. The the key here for East Grand Rapids is to take the ball down the side, then bring it to the middle. They cannot beat this press going down the side. They must attack the middle. 446 to play, first period. St. Clair Lake Shores leading 5-1 over East Grand Rapids. And the Pioneers still looking for their first field goal, and we're nearly midway through this first quarter. It's key for them to stay in the game early here. Turnaround shot off the glass, no. And it's pulled away again by Lakeshore. So their defense has been tough, and East Grand Rapids is now 0 for 3. For a three from outside, that one won't fall by Jeff Patu, and it's pulled on out of there by Jim Carrop. And once again, Carrop struggling. That's about four turnovers now in the early going on the Pioneers. See, Travis Conlon starts at the point, and then he kind of works his way down low. He will play high, he'll play low, he'll flash to the baseline. They'll use him all over the court offensively. Once again, Jim Carrop on the rebound for East Grand Rapids. And again, the Pioneers with a chance to cut into that four-point lead. 5-1 if you just joined us. St. Clair Shores, Lakeshore, 27-0 on the turnover, almost. Elson comes out and picks it up. And 4-3 from the corner. That one won't go by Josh Brewer. And it's out of bounds, and it'll go back to Lakeshore. I think the Pioneers are really fortunate to be only four points down at this stage of the basketball game. They've gotten the ball inside to Vitterini. He has not been able to convert some two, three-inch shots. But on the other hand, I think that the uh, Lakeshoreans have not really established their offense either. Carlos Sesta goes out. Chris Reitz, a 6'1 senior, number 30 into the game now for Lakeshore. Lakeshore is only two for seven from the field, but that's better than East Grand Rapids, 0 for four here in the early going. Travis Conlon on the drive. He's now 0 for three, whistle and a foul. And that one will go against the Pioneers right in front of the East Grand Rapids bench. Take a look at Travis again. does a nice job of penetrating here. And he gets inside, and the defense is not established. If you're going to take the charge, you've got to get there early and establish position, and the defense did not accomplish that. Corbett Elson picks up the foul, his first second team foul on East Grand Rapids. So St. Clair Shores Lakeshore has relied on its defense early on, even though there have not been many points scored this is in the early going. And turnovers have been a big play with a poor shooting, but that certainly is, <laughs> those are characteristics not uncommon to a lot of these games. There's Conlon for two, and he is way off early with his shooting today. Conlon has not had a great offensive uh, semifinal and final game thus far. He's capable of lighting it up, but he hasn't done it thus far. East Grand Rapids, a young team, and there's your first field goal of the game. Jim Carrop gets it, and he has all three of East Grand Rapids' points so far. Maybe that'll get his team off the of schneid a little bit. They finally are in the, the field goal column, and they're only two down here with 2.33 to go. They couldn't get blown out here early, and they haven't done that at That's all. That's exactly right, and Lakeshore has a habit of getting off to a quick start in varying basketball teams, and I think it's the East Grand Rapids' advantage if they can hang in here this first quarter. Eddie Lampton, the point guard here trying to advance it into the fourth part. East Grand Rapids can tie or take the lead now. This is Jim Carrop to give his team the lead. Jim Carrop has all six East Grand Rapids points. East Grand Rapids did a great job of taking the basketball to the left side of the floor, getting a quick reversal, getting it back over to the weak side to Jim Carrop. He had time to set up, and he knocked down the three. Lakeshore has now missed five shots in a row, and because of that drought, East Grand Rapids through the play of Jim Carrop. In fact, his coach said he is just willing us through this tournament, and indeed he is. Jim plays with a lot of heart and a lot of desire. That foul will go up Apparently on Chris Vitorini, take a look inside. They try to make uh, create a lot of moves for Travis Conley. Now, the, the reason why that foul was called on Vitorini was because he did not have his arms extended above his shoulders. He had his arms forward, and Travis is entitled to take that basketball up strong in his space. Carlos Susto will come back in. There goes Pat Flaherty out of the lineup. Pat Flaherty is a 3.9 grade point average. So here's Travis Conlon. His mother went to Michigan State, but Michigan signed him last November. Purdue was in on him. Now Conlon now with two points. He has still not scored a field goal, and our game is tied at six. 
There are three players on Lakeshore who average in double figures, led by Travis Powell, 20 per game. So we're tied with a minute 44 to go. Maybe Vernon, a low-scoring game, East Grand Rapids can hang in there all the way. I think so. I think that if East Grand Rapids can establish the inside game, and there we have Corbett Elson going inside strong, if they can get the basketball inside, they can hang tough with Lakeshore. He missed five layups just like that on the semifinal the other night, but his team still won by 14, so the rims have looked a little tight to some of these kids early this morning, but again, they had to be awfully good to get here. A beautiful little stroke post-up jumper there by Jeff Patu, his first two points. And it's now 8-6. to six. We've got four Lakeshore players with two points each, so they've spread their scoring around. Patu is very good at coming in behind the defense and catching and turning and shooting that little jump shot. Inside a minute now, as you see here in the first quarter. Hard played, if not altogether perfect in terms of technique on the line. Turnover, and it'll go back over here to Lakeshore. So the Shorians, after being down 6-5, now lead 8-6, and they have the ball back. I expect that after this quarter here, both basketball teams will settle down, will execute their offenses much better, and I think you'll see an improvement in, in East Grand Rapids play because they've been able to hang with Lakeshore for a quarter. No shot clock in high school basketball, so, and from the games we've seen this week, they really haven't needed one either. These kids like to get it up the floor and play with it. And it's loose, and the football talent of East Grand Rapids creates a jump ball, and it'll go back on the alternating possession to the Pioneers. Both basketball teams are playing with great intensity. I think they're chasing down every loose ball. They're not conceding any loose balls. I think both basketball teams are doing an excellent job of putting forth a, a great effort. And that's how you win basketball games. That's how you get this far in the tournament. Jason Noel, number four, as you saw, now into the game, Jeremy Collins will sit down. So Lakeshore has used seven players here in the first quarter. And East Grand Rapids has gone with its same starting five. And as you can see, East Grand Rapids likely here now is going to try to play for a last shot, maybe get a tie or the lead. And they can thank Jim Carrick because he's got all six of East Grand Rapids points in the first quarter. Carrick only averages 9.6 a game. That one's out of bounds. Foul called. And with four seconds to go. And Eslin, that's going to send him back on the line. Eslin does a nice job here of locating Vitorini and passing the ball down inside. That one's on Conlon, his first. And so Chris Vitorini will be on the line here to be the first player besides Jim Carrup to score here for East Grand Rapids. He's a 60% free throw shooter, and he can tie the game here at eight with four seconds to play. You can see only a junior. Now we get our first substitution for East Grand Rapids into the game. David Reiner, the 6'1 junior, comes in, and Corbett Elson, only a 10th grader, will sit down. Pretty good future for him, a 10th grader playing in a state championship in his sophomore year. So here's Vita Rini to tie the game. Lakeshore gets one last fling at the buzzer. So we've come to the end of one quarter in the Class B state championship game at St. Clair Shores Lakeshore 8, East Grand Rapids 7. Nothing's been decided. This is the MHSAA on pass. Back at the Breslin, Lakeshore with a one-point lead over East Grand Rapids after one quarter of play in the Class B championship game. I'm being joined right now by my guest analyst, Marshall Thomas from Saginaw High School. Marshall, one quarter played the early stages of this game. The Lakeshore defense probably the big factor. Right. At the beginning of the game, uh, East Grand Rapids was having a little bit of a problem. For example, the first eight possessions, they uh, first missed the first four shots, and then the next four they had some turnovers, but they hung in there. They also, they didn't panic. East Grand Rapids got themselves together and maybe they've weathered the storm. I believe so. And I think that's the reason that they're here in the state finals today. And I think that even the, the beginning score, it's a low score in the first quarter, but I think we can look for a, a little bit more up-tempo uh, ball the rest, of the rest of the game. So far, Travis Conlon, the All-Stater, uh, being kept fairly well in check by East Grand Rapids. Yeah, East Grand Rapids is doing a pretty nice job on the defensive end too, and they know what they have to do against Traveler. Travis. Back to Tim. Okay, Tim Stout and Vern Payne, second quarter underway. Neither team shooting very well. 29% for East Grand Rapids, but only 30% for Lakeshore. So, Vern, East Grand Rapids, the underdog, has to hang in there early, and they've done that. They have absolutely done a fine job. 
And I think we have to give East Grand Rapids defense some credit. I think that they've gotten pressure on, on Travis Conlon. I don't think they've given him anything easy. He's had to work for everything he's gotten thus far in the basketball game. And now I think that the, the, the handling the pressure is a key. And there the basketball goes to the middle. And that's what you have to do against Lakeshore's pressure. That's a whistle and a foul called against Lakeshore. That'll be the Shorians' third foul. Each team with three now. Here's the replay. You take that basketball down to the middle, and that opens up passing lanes against that pressure. Feed down inside low. Vitterini did an excellent job of sealing the defense and drawing the foul. That's two fouls on Pat, uh, Pat Flaherty now, and he's one of their key players for Lakeshore inside. Now East Grand Rapids with a chance to take the lead. So the Pioneers, uh, it hadn't been pretty, but they're hanging tough. Here's Carrop shot, no, but the putback will be up and good. And East Grand Rapids lead. That's Corbett Elson. That's his first two points of the, of the uh, morning. Corbett Elson did an excellent job that time of pressuring the defense on the offense under the basket, the defense under the basket, and then grabbing that offensive put back. That's a second lead now for East Grand Rapids in this game. This team only fourth in its league during the season, but got hot at tournament time, won some big games at the buzzer. Travis Conlon for three is now over four, and then he screens his man out, and Conlon picks up his second personal foul. Jim Carrop did an excellent job there of putting pressure on Conlon's shot. First of all, he puts pressure on the shot, and then he Conlon tries to slide by, and uh, Carrop did an excellent job of screening him off the basket. So no field goals yet for Travis Conlon, who has struggled here in both the semifinal and final game. But then just as you say that, there's a great steal goes in, and he's fouled on the that's a special talent right there, and he made it happen, and he'll go back on the line, I believe, and shoot two. He does an excellent job here of taking the basketball away from Eddie Lampton, and then he had the presence of mind to attack the basket right away, and Eddie, probably through frustration, commits the foul. I guess they called that a foul before he went up for the shot, and he made the shot, but it won't count. So that's two fouls on Eddie Lampton, and now for Lampton will uh, are coming into for the East Grand Rapids lineup, as you see, replacement for Eddie Lampton will sit down and rush now. So it's 9-8, East Grand Rapids, a shot outside. That was no good, and East Grand Rapids pulls it down. Well, Jeff Patu couldn't get it to fall again from the outside. The shooting has not been good, but East Grand Rapids hanging in there. That one rolls around. And is off by Josh Brewer, and Lakeshore pulls it down. Carlos Sesta with the rebound. Travis Conlon now sets it up for the Shorian. Excellent defense by the young sophomore, Esslin. Inside little turnaround. That one won't go, and it's pulled down by Elson, and he takes it the other way. So it's just been a tough morning so far for Lakeshore to get anything going. There have been no sink in either team's offense, but both teams have played hard defensively. Ball's tipped out of bounds, goes back to East Grand Rapids. Surprisingly, but perhaps not surprisingly, East Grand Rapids is playing like a senior basketball team, and St. Clair Shores only has four seniors on their four uh, underclassmen on their entire roster. There's another turnover against East Grand Rapids. Lakeshore has missed another four shots in a row. Now Lakeshore is just three for 13 this morning, and East Grand Rapids is three for 10. As you look at the Lakeshore bench, where uh, Greg has in his seventh season as the head coach, he's never had a losing season. There were 26 in one year. And the baseline play does not result in the dunk that Jeff Patu tried to get to go down, and East Grand Rapids back the other way. Pioneers can perhaps play with more confidence as each minute goes by. Off the glass, that one's up and good by Chris Vitorini. Three for him, and it's the biggest lead this morning for East Grand Rapids. Absolutely, and you've got to give Josh Buer a lot of credit for that basket by Vitorini. He did an excellent job of taking the basketball down inside to the big man. Clarity shot is blocked beautifully outside by Vitorini from the baseline by Conlon. No good, and it's pulled down by East Grand Rapids. So the Pioneers came to play this morning, and they've taken advantage of the breaks they've had. Lakeshore is 0 for 5 from three-point land. Inside, it's up and good, and East Grand Rapids first beat a reading. Two in a row, and now it's a five-point game for the Pioneers, their biggest lead of the day. And again, Jim Carrick found Vitorini down low, did a nice job of delivering the basketball and the bounce pass, and as we said at the beginning of the, of the show, the key for East Grand Rapids is to get the two big kids involved inside, and thus far they've done that and negated Travis Conley. Now they've kept Carrop out there on Collin on the wing. Here's a free point from outside. Make it 0 for 6 now. And it's loose and out of bounds. And East Grand Rapids will get it back. Listen to their fans.
get a substitution here for Lakeshore. 54 6 6 Ron Wallace will come into the game, and he'll replace 6 5 Jeff Patu. So there's Ron Wallace who comes off the bench as Greg Essler, the Scott Tompkins you just saw, the coach for East Grand Rapids. He's got to be very pleased. His team has hung in there. They've scored all the points here in the uh, second quarter. And we're down 8 7. They've scored six points here to open the second quarter with the 417 mark. You can tell East Grand Rapids wants to go inside with it if it can. Peterini back outside looking for help. There's Josh Brewer and this shot doesn't fall. That's out of bounds and it'll go back to Lakestro. Josh was actually trying to pass the basketball down inside that time. He did not look for a shot here. He was looking to get the ball to Vitorini, and Vitorini was trying to go to the basket for the rebound, and as a result, we had a turnover. Eight turnovers now on East Grand Rapids. Here's Travis Conlon outside, and that one still won't fall, and Conlon is now 0 for 7. So Travis Conlon, 5 for 18 the other night, has missed seven shots here in the first 12 minutes of this game. Uncharacteristically, Lakeshore has not been able to generate any offense off of their defense. And I think that's a result of them not being able to drop the basketball down and get into their press. Jim Carrop can't get a couple of shots to go. Now Conlon is he may be pressing just a little bit here because he's frustrated outside for three. And that one won't go by Jeremy Collins, but it's corralled by the Shorians. Chris Reed's caught up with it. Back to Conlon. Carrop is on him. 3.05 to play, as you see here in the first half. They force it inside to the new pitch just in the game, but Ron Wallace can't get it to go, and they'll call traveling on Lakeshore, and East Grand Rapids has it back. This thing, Bart, we've played five minutes, and Lakeshore has not scored here in the second quarter. And, and again, you have to give a lot of credit for that to East Grand Rapids. They get good pressure on the defense, on Travis Conlon. They have good pressure on Patu, and when the ball does come down inside, they collapse and help out very well. And for the most part, they've limited Lakeshore sure to one shot and no putback. So I think at this point in the basketball game, you have to say that East Grand Rapids is controlling the tempo, playing better defense, exhibiting patience on offense, and getting better shots. 24, Andy Hicks for East Grand Rapids. You just saw a 5'11 senior into the game. Lakeshore has now missed 10 shots in a row. So it has been a real struggle here this morning for the Shorians, who led 8-7 after one quarter, but have given up six straight points. Nearly a steal here. Good hustle there by uh, Lakeshore's Jeremy Collins. Lakeshore is going to attempt to force the issue here with a three-quarter court trap. And they did force the and issue. And they did. Well, that's nine turnovers now on East Grand Rapids. This looks to be as if it'll be a very low-scoring game. A great first half. Greg Essler's team here. Scott Tompkins, the coach for East Grand Rapids. East Grand Rapids is... This is the way they can win the game, is just to keep Lakeshore shooting poorly off balance offensively, and that's been the story. And they've done it with man-to-man -man defense. They haven't gone with uh, a press. They haven't gone with its own. They've done it basically with man-to-man -man defense. They look for Conlon down low. That wasn't the best high feet for three outside. That one still won't go. That's 11 shots in a row missed, and Jeff Patu missed that one. But a whistle called and a foul inside, and Elson doesn't like the fact that it's on him, and that's his second personal foul. Corbett Elson says, man, all I did was put my hands up in the air. I don't think there was much contact by Elson here. He brought his arm down and came across the rebounder's shoulder, and I think that's why they called the foul. Well, the submarine contact was there, but they weren't looking there. They were looking up high, and it was Absolutely. down low. But nonetheless, that's the call outside. Here's Conlon for three, and Travis Conlon finally gets his team's first three points in the second quarter in his first field goal. Conlon can hurt you inside. He can hurt you outside. If he gets hot, he can turn this basketball game around in a hurry. Ball will go back to East Grand Rapids here. So Travis Conlon is now one for eight for Coach Greg Essler. And there's Jim Carrop, who's been guarding him. Essler, as I said, in his seventh season, he played at Hazel Park in uh, 1973. He once coached uh, Mike Poplowski, the former Michigan Stater, as an assistant at Warren De La Salle. They're still good friends. Carrop may be getting a little tired here. He's had to 
practically carry East Grand Rapids offensively. And then he's got the tough defensive assignment in guarding Travis. Nelson's pass inside is tipped away by Conlon with a minute 50 to go at, uh, before halftime here. And stay with us at halftime because we'll have a number of features for you on this day of celebration for the Michigan High School Athletic Association with the championship games in the Boys State Tournament. So here comes a Pat Flaherty back into the game, the starting center who struggled a bit, and Ron Wallace. Excuse me, uh, Carlos Sesta will sit out. Back in for East Grand Rapids, as you can see, is Josh Brewer. And he'll replace Andy Hicks, who gets a nice hand as he sits down. 13-11, East Grand Rapids by two. This is Jim Carrop. Dishes it off, three-pointer from outside. Rims off no good by Paul Reiner. And it's pulled away by Travis Conlon of the Shoreans. And he'll pop for three, two in a row. And I'll tell you, that was an NBA three-pointer as well. Travel is called on East Grand Rapids. They've got 10 turnovers now. And it goes back the other way. Actually, that was a good shot choice by Travis. Travis understood that if he knocked that three down, his team was going to take the lead and gain the momentum here going into the uh, third quarter. Conlon posts up down low, dips it off. But Pat Flaherty can't handle it, so it's a turnover the other way. And that five turnovers, now six turnovers now for Lakeshore. So the turnovers are a huge factor in this game along with the poor shooting, but a lot of that caused by hard defense, as you can see. And there's another turnover. Lakeshore going in. And it's a tie game after Jeremy Collins ties it with Atlanta. Points in a row by Lakeshore now. I think that uh, Greg Essler, the coach for Lakeshore, made a wise decision when he decided to go to the three-quarter court trap and force the issue here. This is like old-time high school basketball. We don't have many points here in the first half at all. It's 13 all, and we're inside a minute to go in the second quarter. Not many shots have fallen, that's no, for Oh, they sure. haven't. Here's Travis Conlon, and he falls away. Can't get it to go. He is 2 for 10 now. 1 for 10, excuse me, in the first half. But we're tied. It's anybody's game, and that's what's important. A foul from behind, and that's the third foul on Travis Conlon here in the first half. you got to believe frustration is getting to him up at this point. I think it is. I think that Travis has not played well offensively, and I think he's pressing a little bit defensively, trying to, to help his basketball team. But getting three fouls here in the first half is, is not going to help uh, the Lakeshore Club. So Travis Conlon is on the bench here. Greg Essler not happy with the officiating here at the moment, and he visits with one of the officials as we get a replacement for Travis Conlon in the game. Also for East Grand Rapids, they'll come back with Andy Hicks, and Corbin but also gets a nice hand as he takes a rest. Anytime you put a player in a position where he's got a trap and go for steals, you know, the, the probability that he's going to foul is there, and that's what happened to Travis. 13-13. I don't remember a half that's this low scoring, but nonetheless, uh, that means it could be 50-50. They're still tied. So it's anybody's game, and it just sets up a good second half. And you can win at 15-13, and somebody's going to be just as excited just, just as, as excited. Yeah, no question about it. <laughs> All right, Jim Carrop here looking down the middle to dish it off to someone, and it's out of bounds. It's another turnover, and it goes back to Lakeshore with 14 seconds to go. In a, in a situation like that, you want to get 100% or a 75% shot. That's a shot that you're going to make 100% of the time or 75% of the time, and that was an ill-advised play. So we'll see what Lakeshore does here in these final seconds. Jeremy Collins, 23, and they call it travel. And that one goes against Jeff Patu. It has been contagious this morning. 5.9 seconds to play in the first half of a 13-13 tie. Ron Wallace going to check back in for Lakeshore. And with a couple of fouls, Platt Faraday will sit down. Greg Essler says, i got enough guys in foul trouble. I don't need anybody else. Here's Jim Carrick, but he'll be called for traveling. The, you know, it's uh, it's just like playing golf and shooting par and then getting in a tournament. <laughs> it, it looks a little tougher when there's so much on the line. These guys aren't on television all the time. Okay, Jeremy Collins going to have to fire at the buzzer. That'll be great. That's the end of the first half. It's tied. And for East Grand Rapids, it's a happy moment. And for St. Clair Shores Lakeshore, well, they're not behind. As Greg Gessler heads to the locker room with Scott Tompkins, his uh, counterpart from East Grand Rapids. More like a football game, Vern, at 13 it's, to it, 13. It's been a game uh, full of good plays. It's been a game with... Uh, 
a lot of bad plays. It's been a game of turnovers. But I'll tell you what, it could be 50-50 at the half instead of 13-13, and East Grand Rapids would still be happy. Okay, it's halftime here of our Class B State Championship game. One of your network sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. This is the MHSAA on pass. At halftime of the Class B State Championship, Lakeshore from St. Clair Shores and East Grand Rapids deadlocked at 13 apiece here at the Breslin Arena. East Grand Rapids trying to become just the second team in MHSAA history to win a football championship and boys basketball title in the same year. The other, Detroit St. Martin de Porras back in the early 80s. You know, one of the areas of emphasis for the Michigan High School Athletic Association is educational excellence. And today, 23 of the state's top student athletes are being honored by the MHSAA and by Farm Bureau Insurance with $1,000 college scholarships. Now, for the presentation of the 1994 Scholar Athletes Awards, let's go to the public addresser announcer, Eric O. for Seth. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we direct your attention to center court. Where Larry Thomas, Executive Vice President of Farm Bureau Insurance, and Jack Roberts, Executive Director of the Michigan High School Athletic Association, will make a special presentation. The Michigan High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Award, underwritten by Farm Bureau Insurance, honors the top student athletes in 23 sports in which the association sponsors a postseason tournament. Each student will receive a thousand dollar ship to be used at the institution of higher learning of their choice. More information about the Scholar Athlete Award may be found in the special section of your souvenir program. And now, we present the Scholar Athlete Award Class of 1994. In girls basketball, from Nuevo, Sarah Birdie. In boys cross country, from Port Huron Northern, Eric Osborne. From Grand Rapids Forest Hills Northern, girls cross country, Carly Whitaker. From Iron Mountain, football, Donald Patrick Bunnin. From Gladwin, boys golf, Benton Neal Ball. From Detroit Catholic Central, boys soccer, Adam Boucher. From Warren Mott, girls swimming and diving, Kimberly Candido. From East Lansing, girls tennis, Karen Kanucha. <laughs> Almont, boys basketball, Eric Klavich. <laughs> From St. John's, girls gymnastics, Carla Perez. Grand Rapids, Forest Hills Central, Ice Hockey, Ryan, William, Curry. <laughs> Boyne City, Boys Skiing, Daniel, William, Nakonsny. Ross Common, Girls Skiing, Rebecca Vanderlake. Battle Creek, Harper Creek. Boys swimming, Timothy A. Wright. 
Now, Rebecca Vanderlake of Ross Common, Girl Skiing. Taylor Light and Life Christian, Girls Volleyball, Kelly Kennedy. From Jackson, Wrestling, Harlan Holman. From Dexter, Baseball, Christopher J. Frank. Kalamazoo Central, Girls Golf, Melinda M. Schiltz. Warren Quizno, Girls Soccer, Allison Schmidt. Ann Arbor Pioneer Softball. Mary Ryan Hepburn. And accepting for Mary are her parents, Mary Jo and Jerry Hepburn. <laughs> From Okemos, Boys Tennis. Of Ninder S. Dollywall. Boys track and field, East Lansing. Chao, Tommy Walker. From Fremont, girls track and field, Shala Alice Bobalon. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. How about a big round of applause for the Scholar Athlete Award Class of 1994. And find recipients of the Scholar Athletes Award. A terrific presentation and terrific honor for all these young folks. We're at halftime of the Class B State Championship game. We're deadlocked. Lakeshore and East Grand Rapids at 13 apiece. Stay with us. One of your network sponsors is True Value Hardware. Back at the Breslin, halftime of the B finale, deadlocked at 13 apiece, East Grand Rapids and St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. A football type score, it's almost football type weather, we're getting closer to spring. I'm joined once again here at the half with my colleague, my guest analyst, Marshall Thomas from Saginaw High School. We look at the score, Marshall, and the obvious question of folks, is this good defense or bad offense? From my perspective, I think it's some very, very good defense. Looking at the score, you might even think that uh, the two teams are trying to slow the ball down, but that's not the case at all. Both of these teams are some up-tempo teams. Uh, they're just having a problem uh, working against each other's defense. I, I haven't seen very many shots at all taken without a hand in the face. Now the low score, of course, uh, considering the good defense still, is a big part of that, the state championship pressure? It's very possible, but you know, you don't know uh, really, but it's very possible. But I tell you what, I look for both teams to settle down this second half and for us to get a little bit more scoring, even though I think the defense will still be there. Now the format changed this year, Marshall, the semifinals here at the Breslin as well as the finals. How do you feel about that? You know, I think we, we've all liked it. Uh, we like it first off because it's all in one central location and the fact that you don't have to transport yourself from one area to another one. I know I've enjoyed my two days that I've been here. We've all enjoyed it. Lansing's opened its arms here, and we've certainly had a good time on the Michigan State campus as well. Let's go back to this game here, 13-13, East Grand Rapids and Lakeshore. How about a couple of the key individuals that stood out in your mind so far? Right now, I think for East Grand Rapids, Corbett Elson has really held them in there. I don't know exactly how many rebounds that he's got, but it seems like every time there was a key rebound that was needed, he, he got it. Right now, uh, for... Um, Lake Shore, some of their stars, like Conlon and Patu, I think they're going to need to step forward a little bit more so this second half. Let's try to get into mind a little bit later on of the coaches as we get ready for the second half. But again, it's deadlocked at 13 apiece here at the half of the Class B Championship. Stay with us. One of your network sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. Oh. 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 Oh.
Warriors filing out for the start of the second half in the Class B finale. We're no closer to claiming a victor than we were when we started. As you see, we're deadlocked 13 apiece in this low scoring affair. We mentioned we're back at the Breslin Center here on the campus of Michigan State University. A little bit on the history of the state tournament sites. Tournament started back in 1917 at the Waterman Gymnasium in Ann Arbor. That since uh, has been demolished, no longer in existence. Now from 1932 to 1947, the Upper Peninsula had its own separate state championships. 48 on, they became combined. Since 1928 though, at least on the Lower Peninsula, all four championships have been held at one site. From 1945 to 1970, they were held here at Michigan State, but of course not at the Breslin, over at Jenison Fieldhouse across the road. Then from 71 to 74, it was alternated between Jenison and Michigan State and the new, at that time, new Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor. In 75, they moved over from Chrysler Arena all the time, from 75 to 89 in Ann Arbor, then at the Palace, and now we're back at Michigan State. And this year, for the very first time, all semifinals and finals being played on the same floor. Marshall Thomas again with me here, my guest analyst. Let's try to get into the heads of the two coaches. First of all, Coach Essler of St. Clair Shores Lakeshore had to be considered a favorite coming in. He's deadlocked at the half. I would, th I would think so. I would think that it, uh, he was trying to probably tell his kids to kind of settle down and, uh, you know, do the things that they've been trying to do to be successful all year because they haven't lost a game this year. And the pressure probably is on St. Clair Shores. But when you got kids like Patu and Conlon, I think that they'll be willing to step forward with the second half. Marshall, I thought Vern Payne made a good comment just before the end of the half when he said Scott Tompkins on that bench was deadlocked 13-13. He wouldn't care if it's 50-50 to -50 or 30-30. to -30. He's tied going into the second half. Scott is very, very pleased with the, with the uh, where he is at this point in time. There will probably be a lot of people all over the state with six losses. Wouldn't have thought that he could have gotten to the state finals this particular year. But, you know, that's why we play these tournaments, and that's why it's called March Madness. And that's why we're going to play one more half of basketball for the Class B title. Keep it right here. You're watching the MHSAA on pass. Lansing. It's uh, what you see is what we got. Halftime, 13-13 East Grand Rapids and St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. Let's take a look at a couple of the uh, uh, highlights here. Uh, first of all, Vern Payne. We've got uh, Jim Carrop coming down low to uh, Vitterini, and I think that uh, this typifies what East Grand Rapids is trying to do. And on the other end of the floor, we'll see uh, Chris uh, Jeremy Collins off of a steal here, and he's going to pull up for a jump shot. And I think that's the difference in these two teams. One perimeter, one inside. Okay, so if they get the ball inside as we start the third quarter, and right off the bat, he's right grand rapid score. Right off the bat, Chris Vitorini, that's exactly the play you just diagrammed for him. They must have heard you. Absolutely. And, and again, that's a big key for East Grand Rapids to be able to establish that inside game, and then don't be surprised if the ball goes inside and then it's kicked right back outside for jumpers. Okay, so it's 15-13, East Grand Rapids third lead. There's a turnover on St. Clair Shores Lakeshore, and that for them is their eighth turnover of the game. 13 so far for East Grand Rapids. You can see the field goal shooting from the first half was not good. 31% at 20% for Lakeshore. That's unbelievable for a team 27 and all. Well, with the score 13 to 15, you would think that the team with the best field goal kicker might win. Boy, and it may have come to that. And I got to go with East Grand Rapids because they won the state football title. Jim Carrup inside. That won't go for him. But it's pulled down by Eddie Lampton, the junior point guard. East Grand Rapids is on fire here to start. And that shot just went over. There's a lid on the basket. Josh Brewer couldn't find it. Now Lakeshore back the other way. Travis Conlon here with the ball. One for ten in the first half. And he's fouled. He scores in the basket. Cut. There's the offensive play of the day so far. All good basketball players will take, the take their teams on their backs. And here we see that uh, Conlon goes inside with a left-hand dribble, pulls up, hits a leaner, and draws the foul. Jim Carrop gets him. That's his first foul. So Travis Conlon. And you got to understand, this guy is All-State in everything. Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of basketball, he's also an All-State soccer player as well. And he's had some big games this year, of course, but uh, up until that basket today, it's been a real struggle for him. And yet he's still the leading scorer on the floor with seven points. 
Jim Carra comes off. Well, he's missed a couple of layups. He's loose on that one and misses another one. The tip up is good. He's fouled on the basket counts. And give a lot of credit to Eddie Lampton who made the play complete. You've got to give some credit to Eddie Lampton there, but you've also got to give a lot of credit to Jimmy Carra. He stole that ball, split the defense, went in, laid it up with the left hand, and then Lampton wisely followed with the putback, got it down in the foul. Here we see another angle on Carrup uh, coming in, split the defense, goes in with the left hand, keeps his inside shoulder into the defense and protects the basketball, and then Lampton comes in and does a nice yeah, job. Yeah, it's Travis Conlon with his fourth personal foul. He's on the bench. That's a key play in so many different ways. So here's junior Eddie Lampton, and he misses. And for East Grand Rapids, now they need some points here with a star on the bench. And the drive is up and good by Josh Brewer in his first two. East Grand Rapids already has six points in the first minute and 17 seconds, and that's all they got in the total second quarter, and they got a steal. Jim Carrop, two steals in a row, goes in, lays it up in it. What's significant here is that East Grand Rapids players, although they're perimeter players, are taking the ball to the basket and scoring inside on those easy two-inch shots. Brent and I were saying during the halftime there that the perimeter games for neither club was working. They got to get it inside and off those steals. Obviously, of course, you get easy shots, and, and East Grand Rapids has been rolling. Well. Let's see what Lakeshore has now with their star on the bench, and Jeff Patu now has four points. Uh, somebody, there's a little more scoring here. <laughs> I think as Marshall said at the half, I think both teams are settling down a little bit now, and you can see some better offense. Chris Vitorini turns it over, three on two for Lakeshore. They dump it off. Whistle and a foul's called, and that's an offensive foul against Jeff Patu, and that's his first personal. Well, the first thing you got to do in the transition game is pull up, stop your momentum, and not get that charge call. That would have been a good play if Patu would have just jump stopped and then made the pass and stopped his forward momentum. Yeah, it was a good call, too, because there was position there, and it was Eddie Lampton who took the charge. Burns said he'd be a key player, and he's made some key plays. Here's Carrop up off the glass. He was intimidated there by Pat Flaherty. Uh, back, and you can see some size inside, and Lakeshore pulls it away. What, one man's intimidation, Tim, is another man's foul. <laughs> you got that. Here's Flaherty looking for some help. Goes over the top, and it still won't go. And Jim Carrop again with a rebound for the Pioneers of East Grand Rapids, who have a four-point lead. And that is surprising, believe me. There's a whistle and a foul. That's against Lakeshore. It's against Jeremy Collins, and that's his first. Jeremy's really struggling down inside with uh, Eslin. Elson's doing a, a very fine job of sealing the defense and calling for the basketball. And Flaherty's trying to fight around and, and get position, and as a result of that, he committed the foul. Pat Flaherty is going to get called for that foul, and that's his third. It is not on Jeremy Collins. So three fouls on Flaherty, four on Travis Conlon, and Lakeshore's got two key players in big foul trouble. Underneath, here's Elson puts it up and in. Well, there's Corbett Elson. That's four for him, and it's the biggest lead of the game for East Grand Rapids. And credit Eddie Lampton with finding uh, the big man down inside. They are really doing a good job right now of isolating inside and taking the basketball down low. And unless Lakeshore comes up with some big plays to stop them defensively, East Grand Rapids is on the verge of breaking it open. Jeff Patu can't find it. Here's Carrop the other way. Pulls up and he scores. Jim Carrop. And suddenly, East Grand Rapids has an eight-point lead. And Greg Kessler has seen it up. Lakeshore calls time, and the East Grand Rapids Pioneers are fired up. They have already scored almost as many points here in the first three and a half minutes of the third quarter as they did in the entire first half. And a, a big key here for East Grand Rapids, I think, is their patience and their defense. I think they've generated most of their points here in this third quarter off of defensive steals and interceptions. And then they have the presence of mind to go for good shots down inside with the big fellas. And you can see they beat East uh, Ishpeming West with a team that knocked out two-time defending champion Buda Vista. And then Wyoming Park, which beat East Grand Rapids twice and was beaten by 34 by Lakeshore. So we all figured, well, it looks like a big Lakeshore run away win, and yet Greg Essler's team is in the fight of its life right now. That's exactly right. And the problem with that thinking is that the kids might start to believe that. And if they don't come out and play hard, you've got your hands full. Jim Carrop now has been a sensational player today uh, for East Grand Rapids. He's 5 for 10 from the field, and he has 10 points on the game. He averages 9.6. So here's Greg Essler. Let's go, Mike. 
Travis. He's got Travis coming. Kind of like, you know, have to make a decision here pretty soon, I would think, as to when he's going to bring him back and risk it. Well, I think he's going to lead him out for a couple more minutes minimally so that he'll have him at least for that fourth quarter. But I think right now, here we see uh, Jim Carrick going to the basket strong with that high off the glass leaner. I think right now you're going to see Lakeshore really working hard to take the basketball down low. And I think that's what Coach uh, Esler was trying to get across to the team during that timeout. East Grand Rapids a 6 for 11 shooting this quarter, so that's an enormous improvement. Now a three-pointer off the top of the key is up and good by Jeremy Collins. That's five for him, and it's a five-point game. Nice double screen to create that shot for Jeremy. And he looked confident shooting it, too, and it certainly will help his team that it went down in terms of confidence and not the scoreboard. You can see Lakeshore has turned up the tempo here defensively. East Grand Rapids won the Class C state championship in 1950, 44 years ago. And in Class B, they lost in 1962 by 33 to River Rouge. So they're double. going for something today. Nice double screen there. A nice rhythm on that jump shot by Collins. There's Eddie Lampton dishing it off now. You can see East Grand Rapids looking inside. This has been by far the best played quarter of the three at the 358 mark in the third quarter. East Grand Rapids with a five point lead. And there's a turnover and now St. Clair Shores Lakeshore is getting better play. Jeremy Collins 23 helping make it happen. This is an all senior team of the first nine guys. So this is their last shot. I can guarantee you that Lakeshore was, is not going to fall. I can guarantee you that Lakeshore is going to hang in there and make a basketball game out of this. Well, East Grand Rapids going for a state title in football and basketball in the same school year. And that does not happen very often in at all. And that's a foul that goes against Lakeshore's Jeff Patu. That's his second foul. This is like Lakeshore is 53 and 1 in two years coming into day. There's the foul called against Jeff Patu. These seniors, Vern, have not known losing at Lakeshore. One time, a 20-point loss of the semis last year to Saginaw Buena Vista. And they've won all their games these two seasons coming in today except for that. And right now, Lakeshore's expectation is to win. Inside Corbett Elson doesn't get the roll. Good defense there that time by Pat Flaherty, who made that move with three fouls on him, too. Well, you can't back off. I mean, there's no tomorrow. This is the state tournament. Three fouls, four fouls. It doesn't make any difference. you got to play your game. Now Lakeshore looking to cut into the five-point lead. Turns it over again. And then just that quickly, Eddie Lampton can't handle the dribble. And I'll tell you that we've had 28 turnovers in this game at the 256 mark of the third quarter. There's two quickies right there. <laughs> one, one would think that the key to the game might be whoever maintains a possession and doesn't turn it over and gets a, a good shot. Jason Noll, a 5'9 senior, comes in uh, for Lakeshore, and he'll replace Carlos Sesta. Good look at Greg Gessler. Boy, the butterflies that must be going through him after what they've been through. But as Burns says, you know they'll be in it the rest of the way, whether they win or lose. I'm impressed with Lakeshore. You know, a lesser team would have folded after Grand East Grand Rapids hung in there that first half, but, you know, Lakeshore is still in this basketball game. Here's the shot from the baseline. Look, tipped up and in the basket counts, and a good play inside by Pat Flaherty. Off the, he comes in from the weak side and gets it, and now they have a chance to cut it to two. Patu does a nice job here of turning his body and scoring up to the basket. He didn't get the bounce, but... Flaherty was on the backside, was able to get the put back. That's Josh Brewer with his first personal foul. And so now it's been a five point run here for Lakeshore. Here's the weak side put back, it's good. And on the line is Pat Flaherty, a 3.9 grade point student. So uh, academics are a big deal for him, as well as the basketball court. Three point play, he now has five points today. And it's a two point game. And that allowed Lakeshore to get into their full court press. They really, they really enjoy trapping and pressing off of made baskets, and if they make a few more, I look for the pressure to really increase. Lakeshore on a 6-0 run. There's the turnover on East Grand Rapids, and so now Lakeshore on that one has a chance to perhaps tie or take the lead. Well, it's not a full house for the day, but it's a good crowd nonetheless, and they're making noise. That's the Lakeshore section, as you can see. These games are never easy for coaches at any level, Coach. Never. And with I look for Lakeshore to take their time on this possession to make sure they get what they want out of this, to make sure they don't turn the basketball over and get a good sound shot. Well, they've made this run with their superstar, Travis Conlon, on the bench with four fouls. 
A 6-0 run after East Grand Rapids was so hot. Here's the jumper outside. That's not off. And Jeremy Collins hustles it down in the corner for the Shoreans. They actually got a good shot there. And here's another good shot. Jeremy Collins off again. That's another rebound. Jeff Patu. Well, they've had two chances now turn around by Patu. That won't go, and it's pulled down by Eddie Lampton of East Grand Rapids. So the Pioneers weather the offensive storm there, but they've gone a couple minutes now without scoring. The key thing about that last Lakeshore series, Tim, was that they got three shots. During the second quarter, East Grand Rapids was able to limit Lakeshore to one attempt at the basket, then they got the defensive rebound. 128 as you see to play here in the third quarter. This is going to set up a great fourth quarter. Inside. Oh, they got a nice pass, a little touch pass from Vitorini inside to Corbett Elson. He scores six for him, and they needed that to stop the bleeding. That was a nice junior sophomore combination. You had the big Vitorini coming to the top and looking low for Elson, and they got it down there, and he did a fine job of completing the play. Well, I tell you, East Grand Rapids, a lunch bucket crew. They work hard for everything here as the ball loose on the floor, scramble both ways, and it's out of bounds back to Lake Shore. One thing about these games, they're not perfectly played, but boy, do they play hard. They are played with a <laughs> lot of intensity. Uh, every play might not be pretty, and this is not really a great play here, but we, we see the pass being attempted down inside. He and the drive. He almost got it, but didn't quite have the angle. The wipe up some perspiration here on the floor. 27-23 here in the Class B championship game. East Grand Rapids ahead of St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. It was 13 all at halftime. So inside a minute now in the third quarter. This is Jason Knoll, a 5'9", senior number four. 23 is Jeremy Collins. 30 is Chris Reitz. They're going to hold the ball here because their star, Travis Conlon, is on the bench. So they'll shorten the game and stay within no more than a four points behind. Excellent decision here. And East Grand Rapids is not going to come out and pressure the basketball. They're going to allow them to perimeter the pass and give them the last shot. Well, it's hard to turn it over when you're not doing anything Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. And that's what they want to protect against. So there'll be no more than four down here and maybe less than that at the end of three quarters with eight frantic minutes to go. <laughs> Now they'll go into their offense here in these last 14 seconds, and we'll see if they get anything. And from outside, it's good. They ran it perfectly. Chris Reeves hits the uh, they three on that bird at the buzzer. I think they got a three on that. They get three on that, they, yeah, they get a three-pointer. Nice and it worked for St. Clair Shorts Lake Shore, and after being eight points down, they cut it back to one going to the fourth quarter. So after three quarters, it's St. Clair Shores Lake Shore, or East Grand Rapids 27, St. Clair Shores Lake Shore 26, back for the fourth quarter in a moment. This is the MHSAA on pass. Quarters complete here, and East Grand Rapids with a one-point lead over St. Clair Shores Lake Shores. We get ready for the fourth and final period here at the Breslin Center in the Class B finale. Marshall Thomas joins me once again. Marshall, East Grand Rapids not playing like the underdog anymore. No, as this game goes on further and further, you can see them gaining more and more confidence. And what I mean by confidence is you can just see that they believe in themselves on the decisions that they're making on the floor. The Lake Shore star out with four fouls. However, the other guys have picked it up. I think that's what makes them such a good team. They haven't lost so far this year. They're not simply just simply going to just uh, fold simply because their star is out of the game. Let's go back to Tim. Now their star's back in the game. Travis Conlon, 21, is going to start the fourth quarter with four personal fouls. This team is a point down. So they played that uh, last minute beautifully, oh, yeah. Vern Payne. They played that very well, and, and that's what a veteran basketball team should do. The problem here is that they cannot start relying on Travis Conlon. They have to stay with the team concept and not put pressure on, on Travis to win this basketball game. Well, he tried to make that one, missed it, so he's now 2 for 12. Out of bounds back to Lake or is that a foul? It's going to be a foul. Yeah, it is. And that's against East Grand Rapids. Is that uh, 44 Chris Peterini? And that's his second foul. Third team foul here in this half, so they'll inbound it here. Lakeshore is 3 for 17 from three-point land, so they have struggled there all day long. And from the field totally, Conlon is 2 out of 12. Travis just can't quite get it going, and yet his team's only a point down. But he's got to be careful now with those four fouls. There he is, 21 with the ball. 
joined us late. He signed last November to play at Michigan. Turnaround shot is way off. And that one missed by Carlos Sosta. So now East Grand Rapids weathered again that offensive thrust and will try to add to its narrow lead. Now, Fern, do you take the ball against Conlon here? Do you drive on him, try to get him out of there? You try to drive the ball on Conlon. You try to put him in a situation where he's involved in a trap and he might reach in and, and, and get, a, get a call on him there. Uh, if they continue with this pressure, Conlon could pick up his fifth foul. Now they won't. They don't go to zone to protect him at all. They'll stay man to man. He's 21 with four fouls. And I'll tell you, without him, they're a whole different team. Whether they can win without him, we just have to see. 6:50 to play in the game. We're in the fourth quarter here. East Grand Rapids by one. Possessions and baskets have been like gold in this game. They beat Arini as block, and they'll call the foul, and that'll go against Jeremy Collins. That's his first, and that should send Vitorini to the line. There he is, only a 60% shooter. We see the drive to the baseline and the excellent bounce pass. Vitorini does a really nice job of turning before he shoots, locates the defense, and then takes the basketball up. Greg Gessler looking on. Vitorini's father played at Battle Creek Lakeview in the 1956 semifinal games. Played with Sticks Bolton. That was a pretty good team. And he puts his team a two-point lead. He now has eight points in the game. Chris had 17 in the semifinals on Thursday night. And he averages eight per game, so he's uh, right on that mark right now. Scott Tompkins in his first year. What a first-year present that would be to win a title. And Vitorini, cool as can be, puts his team back up by three. Absolutely. Scott's done a very fine job with his basketball team. As we've mentioned before, they finished fourth in their league, and, and here they are playing for the championship. To tie the game outside, it's up and in by Travis Conlon. He needed that one, and we're tied at 29. And he got it in the flow of the offense. He did not force it. He did not go up one-on-one. -on -one. They did a nice job of reversing the basketball to Travis. He took his time and knocked down the jumper. He has now a couple of three-pointers in this game and 10 points for Conlon, who averages 20. Well, don't count him out, even though he's been struggling today. The only thing that can get him out of here is one more foul. Look good there, too. Travis is a competitor. He's going to be around at the end of the basketball game. I think he's smart enough not to commit that fifth foul. Well, they've got him on the point guard. Now, what he lamped it, although he'll switch off. So East Grand Rapids now struggling to inbound. It turns it over. And that's 19 turnovers today for East Grand Rapids. The one thing that East Grand Rapids cannot do here is throw those long ducks across court. They're going to be intercepted. Now Lakeshore's crowd will explode in front of the bench if the Lashorians score here. Here's Conlon, and he carries it. That's a two-pointer. He's heating up now. 12 for Travis Conlon. More importantly, he's made two in a row. But as Burns says, he's got to keep the enthusiasm to down a little on defense and not reach in there and get his fifth foul. 50 to go. Now let's see if East Grand Rapids can counter here. They led by eight and they called timeout. They had a man in trouble there and so Josh Brewer went ahead and called a timeout. Two point game of 546 to play. East Grand Rapids trailing Lakeshore by two. We'll be back in a moment. One of your network sponsors is True Value Hardware. This is the MHSAA on pass. Tim Stout with Vernon Payne at the Jack Resnick Student Event Center in East Lansing. There we are. Two-point Lakeshore lead with 5.46 to go. You know, I think being out of the basketball game helped Travis. He's able to sit on the, on the sidelines and watch the floor of the basketball game, and he realizes that he can get his shots off without forcing them. They did an excellent job of taking the basketball to him there. He looked like the All-Stater he is on his last two shots, putting them both in for five points on this quarter. And he has all of his team's points in this quarter. Remember, it was 25-17 in favor of East Grand Rapids, and they throw it away. The one thing that Coach Tompkins told his team at halftime was to be patient against that pressure, shorten up the passes, and make sure you don't turn it over. And that was a key turnover. Now Scott Tompkins' team has to tighten it up defensively and just hope to hang in there with enough field goals on offense. 31 to 29, two-point game. And here's Conlon wide open for three. Chris Vitorini pulls it down. East Grand Rapids has a chance to tie or take the lead here at the 5-12 mark. East Grand Rapids has got to keep from turning it over, though. That's been killing them here all day long. Absolutely. Inside, Elson can't get it to go. No call on a lot of contact there. And a good play defensively by Jeff Patu, who kept Elson from able to score. And you can bet Lakeshore is looking for its man, and that's 21. And there he is, Travis Conlon. 
in a pickup game, Vern, he'll take that. Yes, he he'll will. take it in this game. <laughs> He's had success. <laughs> Outside for three, and that one's, that's two three-pointers, and Conlon runs it down. Lakeshore owning the offensive glass here in the second half. Conlon's got to give the basketball up and try to catch it away from the defense. Inside, turnaround, jumper finally falls. And the man to get it done was Carlos Sesta. Four for him, and now it's 33 to 29. And Lakeshore is on a 16 to 4 run here in the second half. 33 29 at the midway point of the fourth quarter. This 2 3 half court trap is really bothering East Grand Rapids. Jim Carrop, they've taken him out of the game and puts it back in. Carrop now with. Uh, 12 points for Jim Carrop. They needed that one. They They're needed that one, and Carrop is right there, split the seam of that trap, pulled up for a nice short jumper. As his coach, Scott Tompkins, has said, Jim Carrop has just willed his way to keep us in the tournament. Another turnaround shot. That one won't go, and it's pulled down by Chris Vitorini. Well, it looked as if Sesta would make two in a row not to be. So, again, East Grand Rapids, chance to tie or take the lead. Here's Brewer inside. No. And he gets an offensive board and ties the game. Josh Brewer. Nobody there underneath on the defense. And Brewer stayed with that shot. No one checked him off. Able to get the rebound and stick it right back. I tell you, there's not a lot of scoring, but it's a close game. Even up Conlon down the middle. Whistle, and I believe he's fouled. And that one will go against East Grand Rapids. And is it Vitorini underneath who gets it? No, it isn't. Here, it's here, against here's Travis Lampton. going to the basket. Does a nice job of faking off the screen. And I think it was 11. Uh, now Lampton. Eddie Lampton, Lampton has his third. The foul. You notice Conlon looked to make sure here that he wasn't going to get a charge in the middle there. He was with four fouls. He's been hanging around. He missed most of the third quarter, but his presence has brought his team back from an eight-point deficit. This is Travis Conlon. There's one move. Here he is off balance, and that one won't go either. A nice job by Jim Carrop, and then loses it out of bounds. You know, if Jim Carrop loses this game, nobody will remember him here 32, but what a job he's done chasing Conlon, to, and he's got him 4 for 17 shooting he's today. He's done an outstanding job on Travis, and, and he's come off of screens. They're screening for Travis, and he's worked very, very hard to limit Travis's shots. So Lakeshore, 2.57 to play. The game is tied at 33. Lakeshore looking for its first ever state championship, only one for East Grand Rapids 44 years ago. Conlon for three. He'd make it four for 18. It won't fall today. And East Grand Rapids now on a four point run with a chance to take the lead. Pioneers. This is going to be right out of the movie Hoosiers if they win this to come back from where they were and they get a travel against Josh Brewer. You know, and I'm not sure in college that call might get made, certainly not in the NBA, but in the high schools, you got to plan it on those moves to start or they're going to call you for traveling. Absolutely. You've got to establish your pivot foot before you put the basketball down in high school basketball, or you will get called for traveling. There's a question about that. 21 East Grand Rapids turnovers have resulted in 17 Lakeshore points. 2.15 to go outside. That one is up and off. No good. Loose on the floor, and East Grand Rapids has it. Pat Flaherty missed it, and so now at the two-minute mark, you have to wonder if they want to slow it down, maybe even delay the game, and East Grand Rapids, Scott Thompson says, let's shorten it, and there's a timeout on the floor. This telecast is a copyright production of the Michigan High School Athletic Association, and pass. No reproduction of the pictures or accounts of this game may take place without the express written permission of the MHSAA and pass. Tim Stout with Vern Payne. As you take a look at the East Grand Rapids Pioneers around first-year coach. Scott Tompkins and what a per gutty performance they played. This is the kind of game they had to have to have a chance. And let's listen to Scott uh, Essler, the uh, great guest for the coach at Lakeshore. Whoever you have, you're belly up with them right away. They understood. Belly up on them right away. Next time, listen to me. Next time I'm off, we're going to run Iceland. Next time I'm off, we're going to run Iceland. They understood. Next time I'm off, we're going to run Iceland. 32, 32, 32 on Let's go two minutes. Coach Essler wants his defense to belly up, keep people in front of him, take away penetration, and then on the offensive end, Coach is looking for an isolation, and if you're going to isolate somebody, I would have to guess it's going to be Travis Conley. Now, if you were East Grand Rapids, would you try to two minutes?
confidence of being a eternity in a high school game, especially under these conditions, and trying to isolate the ball and play it at the end. Would you just try to keep it, look for a good shot, or do you want to shorten the game here? I think the first thing that you got to tell the kids, and I'm sure Coach Tompkins told them, is that, hey, we've got to do a better job against the half-court pressure and the half-court traps, take care of the basketball, and then we want to take the ball to the middle of the floor against those traps and try to get a good, easy inside basket. I don't think they're going to try to hold the basketball for two minutes. 11,314 looking on here in this first game today. If they're all this exciting, it's going to be a great day. 33 all. East Grand Rapids trying to win as an underdog. And they're going to fire from outside. That one's off. And there's perhaps the break the Lakeshore wanted. Not the best shot by the Pioneers. Josh Brewer took the shot. And so now, let's see what Lakeshore. Travis Conlon, their superstar, has the ball against Jim Cara. And they're going to shoot. Flaherty shot as an air ball. And it's pulled up by Corbett Elson. I think they wanted the ball to go down inside the Flaherty. But then when the defense collapsed, bring it right back out to the jump shooter, Conlon. East Grand Rapids. 121. Well, you see the clock. You Count it for yourself. Now will turnovers be a factor here in the final moments of this tie game? Tight man-to-man. -man. Inside, that's the man they want. He lays it up and in. They take patience, and Corbin Elson that's, gives East Grand Rapids the lead. And that's the play they wanted after the timeout. They wanted penetration. They wanted to pass down low. They got it the second time around. 53 seconds to play. Conlon's going to put it up. Oh, he was fouled. Both Tremendous balls. defense. They, well, they do call the foul. They kind of came in late on that one. Now, was he, he fouled him before the shot? It looked like it was during the shot here, which would put him on the line to shoot. Yeah, see, he hooked him there. I saw that. That's got to be the call, isn't it? I don't know where they called that. It's a, it's a foul, but not a shooting foul. You'll have to cue me in on that one later. any rate, Lakeshore has the ball with 48 seconds to go, down by two. They got it to their money, man. Here's Conlon. He puts it over the corner. Travis Conlon. 36-35. Lakeshore with 37 seconds to play. East Grand Rapids They're calls timeout time and gets it. I'm not sure exactly. Or do they call a foul beforehand? I believe they called a foul before the timeout. I'd say they do. They call a foul against Lakeshore before the timeout. And Greg Essler's going to want a timeout here eventually. Now Lakeshore wants the timeout. So they get, East Grand Rapids get a little profit there. They don't spend the timeout. They get it. And they also will go to the line and shoot free throws. Here's Travis Conlon. That is his third three-pointer today. And he's had eight points in this fourth quarter, and his team has a one-point lead. Each team with two timeouts left, Vern. Well, Travis has been really tough the second half when they reverse the basketball to him and isolate him for jump shots. He doesn't have to put the ball on the deck and dribble. He can just catch, set, and shoot. And that's what he did on this last play. 15 points of Lakeshore's 36 by Travis Conlon, who's back close to his average. All right, here's Scott Tompkins. Let's listen in. Unless the great shot, lay up for a great shot. Okay? Remember that. Fouls you got. You got to foul right away. You got to foul right away if you miss a shot. Okay? You're going to foul again. You got two left. We're going to go diagonal for a second. Diagonal here. Corbett's here. Um, Josh. Jimmy, set the screen here. Josh, you're here. Fid, you're here. Bring it over, Eddie. Get a good screen. Corbett, you flash right down. It's not there. Don't run it. Good screen down. Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy, pop up. Get right on the pin on a two-man game on this side. Okay? So you're going to screen down for Jimmy. All right, Josh? Understand that? Hey, you take it to the basket strong. You're going to have to foul. You're late for the basket. Two time out. Okay. There you have the East Grand Rapids point of view. That was a 16 foul, no one and one. So East Grand Rapids will inbound the basketball. Would you rather be one up without the ball or one down with the ball? I would rather be one up <laughs> in any circumstances. Okay, 33 seconds to go. Corbett Elson will inbound the basketball to Jim Carrot. Well, here we are in the final seconds of the B Championship game, right on the line. Carrup hit a three-pointer at the buzzer the other night to win it for his team in the quarterfinals. Eddie Lampton is 11. Oh, he finds Elson wide open to give his team the lead by one. Great with 11 play. seconds to go. You got to double up here. No timeout. Conlon buries 
in and he's fouled with five seconds to go from behind by Jim Kara. And they're going to put apparently Travis Conlon on the line. Is that the seventh team foul or is it a common foul? No, it is not a shooting foul. That's the sixth team foul. 37-36. Here it is. Boy, he barreled in there to Elson. There was no call there. So they call it a common foul. Timeout. The next foul to put someone on the line. And so Lakeshore will have the basketball one point down with 5.6 seconds to go to win it or lose it. This is what it's all about. Both basketball teams right now have an opportunity to win the game. East Grand Rapids has got to play tremendous defense here. They've got to skew the defense to take away Conlon, but at the same time, I think that they can go down inside and get hurt if they put too much pressure on the perimeter. And of course, Lakeshore has an opportunity here to set Conlon up for a jumper or take the ball down inside for either a shot or a foul. Let's see what they want to do. on Jim Carapas second. So here we go now. Timeout East Grand Rapids. They wanted to look at what Lakeshore wanted to set up. And so now each team has one timeout remaining here. As this one comes to us. That's why 100,000 people are in Lansing this weekend. <laughs> Tim, Tim, this game might have started out very slow. We had 13 to 13 at half. But 36-37 with 5.6 on the clock is pretty exciting. I mean, it could be 102 to 102. It's still, to, this is a one-point game. And uh, now you're, this is still the situation you want to be in, right? Uh, by the way, the D game coming up, as you see, at 2 o'clock here on pass. And one of three more championships to be decided today. That's at 2 o'clock. The C game at 4. And tonight is the Class A championship at eight right here on pass during Fan Appreciation Weekend. All right, we're going to listen in with Greg Essler. They've got to try to get the basketball to their primary scorer, and that's Travis Collin. But if they can't inbound it to Collin, I think they're going to have two guys charging the block to try to get the pass into the post. Well, they, they say this is a celebration of an educational experience. Right now, everyone's tense. In a moment, someone's going to be heartbroken, and someone's going to be higher in the top of the world. That's Absolutely. basketball. But I think both of these clubs can be proud. I think East Grand Rapids has played very well, and Lakeshore has shown a lot of poise, and they're playing like the champions that... They possibly will be. There's been some great finishes in tournament history. We may have one right here. Here we go. Lakeshore's going to get it to Travis Conlon. Little late footer, and he gets it to go with one second to go, and East Grand Rapids calls timeout. Remember that one for a long time. It rolled around and rolled around, and then it fell. Now, the Scott Tompkins says we want more than a second put on the clock. He wants some time added to that clock. Here we are, Byrne. Here we come. He does an excellent job here of maintaining jump shot. He stayed with it, kept his concentration, got the roll. And they do we see it again. Out. He came off of the screen at the top. Maybe there was a block foul there. See what the time is when Elson here calls time with 2.7. That's great. Right. Yeah. He should get at least a second or so put back on the clock. So the All-Stater Travis Conlon, would that be a way to close out a high school career for all the shots he's missed today? 15. The one he made is the one that might have given his team all and he made a difficult shot. He was moving to his left, caught the, caught the pass, moving away from his strong hand, was able to take the blow from the defense and then get squared up and knock it down. Travis, 
They have put a second back on the clock, so that'll be two seconds left. And let me tell you something, I remember the game that Irvin Johnson played his senior year when Kevin Smith hit one from behind midcourt to send it into overtime. I remember the 70-footer here against Buena Vista, I believe, in Class B a couple of years ago at Price Arena on the Mark Macon uh, days that his team uh, won, I believe. I mean, so though, I mean, we've seen shots, but two seconds, something can still happen. You remember the NCAA tournament game with Christian Leitner when he knocked Duke out of the or knocked Kentucky out. Well, East Grand Rapids has really got two options here. They can try to get the foul on the baseline if they're allowed to run the baseline, go to the line and shoot a one and one. Or they got to throw it deep enough to turn and get a nice jumper off. And they don't want to foul. Lake Shore does not want to foul anywhere at all. That is for a sophomore like Corbett Elson, who thinks he's a hero with five seconds to go. And three seconds later, Travis Conlon takes over as the hero. And now there's still two seconds left to determine if we have another hero. So as you heard Burns set it up, it'll be Chris Vitorini to inbound it. There'll be no pressure on the ball. The count is still on until that ball is caught. Here's Carrop, and it's stolen away, and that's the game. It was batted away by Jeff Patu, and St. Clair Shores Lakeshore has won its first ever state championship. St. Clair Shores Lakeshore comes from behind with a basket in the final two seconds by All-Stater Travis Conlon, Travis Conlon, and they win it. 38 to 37 over a heartbroken but game East Grand Rapids team which was a huge underdog not only today but in this tournament and nearly pulled off a tremendous victory. 38 to 37 as the Shoreans celebrate a 28 and 0 season with a comeback win here today. It wasn't pretty for either club but it was gutty both ways. And as happy as you are for one team, your heart breaks for the other no matter who would have won it. I, I think East Grand Rapids played a tremendous basketball game and I think they have a lot to be proud of. They gave themselves an opportunity to win. It took a great play by Travis Conlon to uh, put Lakeshore up. And we see here where well, that was Patu who knocked the ball away from Carrop on the last play. So there are your Class B state champions. They went 54 and one the last two seasons. No team in Michigan high school basketball has won that many games over the span. We'll come back with our award presentation and post-game interviews in a moment. You're watching the MHSAA on pass. Ladies and gentlemen, before the presentation of the championship trophy and medals, let's acknowledge these two fine teams for their achievements this year and their play here today. At this time, we direct your attention to center court where William Newkirk, superintendent of Maple City Glen Lake Community Schools, member of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Representative Council, will make the awards presentations. First, let's honor the runner-up in Class B, the Pioneers of East Grand Rapids. First, we will present individual medals. Number 20, Paul Reinert. Twenty-one, Ryan Norton. Twenty-two, Andy Bolima. Twenty-four, Andy Hicks. Thirty, David Reinert. Thirty-three, Andy Blas. Thirty-five, Steve Morris. Forty-two, John Worthful. Eleven, Eddie Lampton. 12, Josh Brewer. 
32, Jim Carrop. Forty, Corbett Elson. Forty-four, Chris Vitterini. And accepting the runner-up trophy in Class B, Scott Tompkins. Head coach of the Pioneers of East Grand Rapids. Congratulations on an outstanding season. And now for the 1994 Michigan High School Athletic Association Class B champions, the Shorians of St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. First, we'll present the individual medals. Number three, James Scrivo. Number four, Jason Knoll. Number 11, John Murtaugh. 12, Brian Reitz. 30, Chris Reitz. 40, Don Lacey. 54, Ron Wallace. 55, I am Bondi. 10, Jeff Patu. Twenty-one, Travis Conlon. Twenty-three, Jeremy Collins. Thirty-three, Pat Flaherty. And number fifty, Carlo Sesta. And accepting the championship trophy for the Shorians of St. Clair Shores Lakeshore, Coach Greg Elser. Congratulations to St. Clair Shores Lakeshore, the 1994. The Shorians win the Class B championship here at Breslin. They're celebrating as they should be. What a fantastic finish. A terrific high school basketball game. Stay with us. We'll talk with the winning coach and players. One of your network sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. Back at the Breslin Center, the crowd still trying to catch its breath after a tremendous high school basketball game and a great finish. Uh, the two teams kind of struggled in the first half, but boy, did they put it together. And down the stretch, who can forget that sequence? Travis Conlon hits a three to put Lakeshore on top by one. East Grand Rapids comes back. Corbin Elson scores to put the Pioneers on top by a single point. And then down the stretch, a tremendous finish from the corner. They may call it Conlon Corner from here on in because Travis Conlon hits that twisting fallaway shot that spins around the rim, hangs on the rim what seems like an eternity before dropping through, which gives the Lakeshore Shorians the championship in Class B. Right now, we're going to go courtside. Tim Stout and Vern Payne have some very happy Shorians to celebrate their victory.
Okay, with me is uh, Greg Gessler, the head coach. Uh, congratulations, coach. I imagine in your sleep you'll see that ball around the rim and around the rim and down to win, and your superstar gave it to you. Well, there was no question. The last play, uh, we set up for Conlon, and he was either going to win it and lose it for us. But uh, we had, I had great confidence, and uh, I knew when it was rolling and trickling that it was going to go down. When he got in foul trouble, that kind of messed up your plans in the second half, didn't it? That messed us up because our defensive pressure was nowhere what uh, it should have been. And I thought... Uh, the other kids, Zoe Reitz and Collins, stepped up when uh, Travis got that fourth foul. It, 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 it must get tough when you're missing some of those shots as close as he was. Then he buries a couple for you in the fourth quarter. But then, again, like I told Vern, you miss a lot of them, but he hits the one you have to have to win. Well, he's a clutch player, and there's no question. Uh, we're, you know, it's just not the Travis Conlon show, but... Uh, He's a great player, and he's going to have a great future at Michigan. There's no question about okay. that. Congratulations, Thanks, Coach, Tim. on your state championship. Uh, you. Nice thank to talk with Vern Payne's with, uh, with Travis Conley. Vern? I've got Travis Conley and Jeff Patu here. Jeff, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you played very well on both ends of the basketball court, but it's fitting that you came up with a big play at the tail end of the basketball game that had knocked the basketball away from Carib. Tell us what you were thinking. I didn't know. I was, uh, I was thinking of going up for the ball at first, but I didn't know they were calling the game tight, like in the first half with Travis, and I had two or three fouls. So I, I wasn't sure if I should jump for the ball. I just wait till he got it, and as soon as he got his hand, I went right underneath. Coach says never go do uh, over the top because you can get a foul, so I just went underneath him, snapped it away, and Carlo came, came over and snatched it. So. Great play. Excellent play. Now let's talk to Travis for a moment. Travis, you struggled a little bit that first half offensively. You uh, missed some jumpers. But everybody in the auditorium knew that going down the stretch, you were going to get the basketball. You got it. Tell us what happened. Well, we were in a timeout, and our coach, I told my coach that earlier when I hit the three-pointer go by one, I told him I wanted to run our play. It's called 40. It's out of bounds. Play for me for a three-pointer. And, and I connected on it, and I told him I wanted the ball at the end of the game. If I wanted to lose, I wanted to be on my shoulders. And... We ran a play called 30, and I came off a pick from Pat Flaherty. And uh, Carlos Sessa got me the ball, and I just went to the hole and tried drawing the foul and just finished my shot and followed through and went in, and it was that was it. It was all over after that. Congratulations. Thank you Great lot. championship. Thanks. Okay, guys, congratulations. Let's see what those medals look like. You're champions in Class B. Congratulations, congratulations to both of you. Congratulations, guys. Okay, Vern, so it's 38-37. And they will celebrate tonight. They will celebrate tonight, and it, the game started a little slow, 13-13 at the halftime, but both teams picked it up the second half, and it came right down to the wire of just a, a great high school championship basketball game. And it's a first to four today at the Breslin Center. Now let's go back to Rick. Thank you, gentlemen. If that's the sign of things to come, boy, have we got a great day on tap for you. Just one down, three more still to come. Keep it right here. One of your network sponsors is True Value Hardware. The fans filing out of the Breslin Center here on the campus of Michigan State University after watching a terrific high school finish. Lake Shore from St. Clair Shores wins the Class B title by a single point over East Grand Rapids, 38 to 37. We've still got plenty more to come uh, later this afternoon as at two o'clock we've got the DC doubleheader. Eben Junction, Superior Central from UP, and Grand Rapids Covenant Christian come up at 2 o'clock. Let's take a look at some final numbers here. You see East Grand Rapids a fine 44% from the floor after starting out very cold. Lakeshore struggled from the floor the whole game pretty much. Finished 28%. Free throws, uh, not a much of a factor either way. The rebounding edge to East Grand Rapids, but that was negated by the turnover edge that the Lakeshore defense forced 22 turnovers to just 14 for the Shorian. So in the end, again, the, the clutch shooting by both ball clubs, and it's just a, a terrific tribute to both teams that in the end, uh, it wasn't mistakes that decided it, but each team made plays, and it just so happened that Lakeshore had the ball, and their all-stater Travis Conlon made the final one. Quick reminder, we've got the DC doubleheader coming up for you at two o'clock here on pass. Superior Central from the UP against Covenant Christian from the Grand Rapids area. That'll be followed immediately by the Class C finale, Orchard Lake St. Mary and Granville Calvin Christian. Then later on tonight, the Class A climax, Detroit Murray Wright takes on Detroit Pershing, the two-time defending champions. Once again, the final score here in the Class B championship, Lakeshore wins it 38-37 over East Grand Rapids. We'll see you at 2 o'clock right here on Pass.
Today's broadcast of the MHSAA Finals is made possible by Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award. True Value Hardware, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports Are Winners program. 